Hey guys, um, all right, we're going to start with 4.2. Um, the title of 4.2 is the real zeros of a polynomial function, okay? So I got a few uh, different color pens and erasers and markers and pencils. We're going to need um, a highlighter just because we're going to be highlighting a lot of important uh, key concept and vocabulary. So vocab, here we go, okay? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 2. Some numbers that I made up. So 12,345 divided by 2. And then in elementary school, we learned that we divide it this way, right? So our answer is 6,172 with the remainder of 1. So we put it over 2. Basic. Nothing, nothing special. So let's talk about the vocabulary of elementary school division problem. In elementary school, we call this the dividend. Right. We call the two the divisor. Now, when we put it this way, when we divide it this way, it's still the same thing. This is still called the dividend. It doesn't really change. The name doesn't change, even though it's in the different place. This is still called the divisor. Now this right here is your quotient, okay? Quotient is the answer to a division problem, and this answer happened to have a remainder. So this one is your remainder, okay? And again, it's a remainder is always placed over your divisor. So, remember these, the words, these words that your elementary school teacher used, hopefully? So now that we are in pre-calculus and we're doing dividing, okay, we're dividing polynomials, we are still going to use the same words, okay? But um, just kind of in a different way. Our equations, they look different. So here we go. Let's focus on the first box here. We have a lot of theorems today. It's kind of our... Um, a note today is kind of boring, so but please listen because even though it's boring, the concept is so important. All right, before I dive right into highlighting a bunch of stuff, I want to dedicate this video. I want to dedicate this video to all my country fan. Right? If you love country music, this is for you. All right, here we go. <laughs> Division algorithm for polynomials. It says, Division algorithm for polynomials. If f of x and g of x denotes polynomial functions. Okay, that means they're two different polynomial functions. And if g of x is a polynomial whose degree is greater than zero, then there are unique polynomial functions, q of x, which is the answer, and r of x such that, so r of x is going to be our remainder function such that. So here we go. I'm taking, okay, I'm taking my f of x, which is, and then I'm going to divide another polynomial, g of x. These are just two polynomials dividing each other. This is on the top, so remember we call this the dividend. Okay, this is on the bottom, so we call this the divisor. Okay, when we divide them, we get a thing called the answer, and the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. And we also have a remainder. And sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. So here's our remainder. Okay. And our remainder is always over our divisor. Okay. So that's all the same. Okay. Now let's talk about what this is. So if we have an answer, okay, so I'm gonna write some basic math up on the top. Five divided by two. We have an answer of two and a, a half. No big deal, we all know that. Now, if I want to get back to five and a half, what I do is I multiply these, right? Two times two, okay? And then I add this. Would you agree with that? So two times two plus one, that's gonna be five. And then again, we put it over our divisor, so it's two. So I can go from 
this is called a mixed fraction to an improper fraction by doing this times and add. Well, same thing. This is a mix. Okay, this is a mixed fraction here. I can go from a mixed fraction back to my original by taking my g of x multiplied to my quotient. See what they did here? g of x multiplied the quotient and add my add my remainder to get back my my original. And that's all we do. Okay? So, where and then it spells out, okay? Your r of x is your remainder. Your your denominator and they, they don't have to use g of x, they can use q of x and w of x, whatever it is. The denominator is always going to be your divisor. The numerator is always going to be called the dividend. The answer to a division problem is always going to be called the quotient. Okay. Now it also says here, um, the remainder, look at this right here, the remainder is either the zero of the polynomial or a polynomial of degree less than that of g of x. So if you have a remainder, so what that says is, if you have a remainder, it cannot be larger than your divisor. That's what it says here. If you have a remainder, your degree must be less than your divisor, which is that. Okay. Okay, remainder theorem. We're moving on up. Here you go. Remainder theorem says, let f be a polynomial function if f of x is divided by something called x minus c, then the remainder is f of c. Okay, what on earth does that mean? So let's give you an f of x, okay? Um, let's see, I'm going to make up something. f of x equals x squared minus, let's see, minus 2x and then plus 3, like that, okay? So there's my made up polynomial. And it says here, here's my polynomial, if f of x is divided by x minus c, okay, well I want you to divide x minus 3, okay? Then the remainder is f of c, so let's look at it, okay? Let's divide. Here we go, long division, x minus 3, and if you don't remember long division, this is a great review for you. x squared minus 2x plus 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x squared, we're going to divide it by x. So what we're going to do is take the first term, divide it by that very first term. x squared divided by x is going to be x. Okay. Once you have gotten something on the top, you multiply it back. x times x it's x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Okay. Well, but this is not it. Once you got, once you have written something here, you go in and you change your sign. If it used to be a plus, you change to negative. If it used to be negative, you change your plus. So now, you combine them. The first two terms will always cancel. Okay. So now I have a negative 2 and a positive 3x. I'm going to end up with a positive x bring down my positive 3, okay? Let's see if this works. You know what, since I made, this is not going to work, let's change it to negative 3. How about that? Sorry, I just made this up, so don't. Okay, just negative 3. Does that bring down negative 3? I just want to make it a nice number. So, a negative 3, we're going to have an x minus 3 divided by an x minus 3. So, take this first term, divided by that first term, x divided by x, it's a positive 1, so write positive 1, okay? So 1 times x is a positive x, 1 times a negative 3 is a negative 3, but remember, you got to go in and change your, your signs, okay? So those two will cancel, a negative 3 and a positive 3 will cancel, therefore I have a remainder of 0, no remainder at all, okay? So when I divide these two, my answer, my quotient, this is my quotient, it's x plus 1, okay, with no remainder. No remainder. All right, so now, how, what the, what does this have to do with this? Okay, well, it says here, let f be a polynomial of f of x. 
when I divide it by x minus c, in this case, my x minus c happened to be this, okay? Let me zoom out. Okay, uh, x minus c happened to be this. Then the remainder is f of c. Okay, well, if this is x minus c, then c must be 3. Would you agree? Okay, if this is f minus c, just like this, this is x minus c, then c has to be 3. Well, how does that work? f of 3, it says then my remainder is f of 3. Well, let's see if that works or not. 3 squared is 9 minus 2 times 3, which is 6. Bring over my negative 3. 9 minus 6 is going to give me, what is that, 3? So f of 3 equals 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the remainder is 0, which is exactly what we have. Okay, so if you just want to find the remainder, it's a lot easier to plug in your c value into the equation than doing long division. Wouldn't you agree? So knowing this theorem is so useful if all you're looking for is the remainder. You got it? All right, moving on to factor theorem. Factor theorem, let me just zoom in a little bit here just to fit, okay. Let f be a polynomial function that x minus c is a factor of f of x if and only if f of c equals to zero. Okay, let's read that one more time. Let f be a polynomial function that x minus c is a factor of f if and only if f of c equals 0. That is related to this theorem. These two are related to each other. My, when I did this division over here by long division, okay, would you agree that when I took f of x divided by x minus 3, my remainder was 0, okay? And when I did it this way, it was also 0. So we know we did it right. But it says here, hey, if your remainder is 0, Okay, if your remainder is zero, then this piece right here is a factor. Okay, is that a true statement? Well, let's look. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, I have one quotient, which is x plus 1, and I have another factor, x minus 3. If I were to FOIL this back out, I would get this. So that's what it means. If you have a remainder zero, then this is a factor, okay? In another word, this is just kind of going backwards, okay? If f of c is zero, then x minus c is a factor, which is the same thing, the same saying, right? If f of c is a factor of this function called f of x, then f of c is zero. So all of these right here is, all these three boxes is really stating the same thing, okay? So x minus c is a factor if f of c is zero, all right? Next one, number of real zeros theorem, okay? This means, let's read it, a polynomial function of a degree, something called n, if n is greater than or equal to one, has at most n real zeros. So let's talk about this. f of x equals, let's um, do x to the seventh. I'm just kind of making up some numbers, okay? This means I have at most seven real zeros, okay? That doesn't mean I have exactly seven real zeros. I might have one real zero, or zero, nothing at all, no real zeros at all, and all of it imaginary. Uh, but it's kind of different from turning points. Let me bring turning points back. Turning points, I have at most six, okay? So turning points always less, but real zeros, seven. It d this, again, doesn't mean I will have all seven. I might have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or not at all, okay? Let's 